We're back here on the John Forcade Show, one of the John Forcade specials this week, a new 2015 F-150 Super Crew Cab XLT Series, over $11,000 off in savings. Man, listen, can't find a better deal than that. Brand new 2015 Ford F-150 Super Crew Cab XLT Series, over $11,000 in savings right here in the heart of Metairie, Veterans Ford. We're back here on the John Forcade Show. John, uh, last Saturday, man, listen, you couldn't have write a script that was, was crazier than what we saw happen in Baton Rouge over the, the whole week of speculation. And, and I think even people inside the LSU administration, the coaching staff, they thought it was it, that this was going to be it for Les Miles. And then the shocker right after the game, the announcement that Les would be back in 2016. But... Uh, well, that's not a lot of highlights uh, to this football game, but you know, one of the things is, we talked about it last week, how well they matched up against A&M in the trenches. And no matter who's playing there, they've been able to win, did the exact same thing again, 19 to seven, Leonard Fournette, great game, 32 carries, 159 yards, one touchdown, and they needed him because that passing attack, it wasn't bad, it was horrendous. The way they couldn't throw the football downfield and his 1,741 rushing yards broke Charles Alexander's single season rushing record. So congratulations to Leonard Fournette. He's had a great season. I think he's the best player in America. He just won't win the Heisman. The guy in Alabama, right. Derrick Henry, will end up winning it. Well, I think there's, uh, there was opportunity this year. You, you could have saw him rush for 2,000 yards. Didn't play McNeese State. And he went three weeks in a row where he really had some uh, tough opponents. He went against Alabama, Arkansas, and LSU. He didn't really put a lot of yardage on the board. Uh, but the way the game went about, and we'll get to less in a second, but to get the way the game went about, you were right. It, it was evenly matched up front. It was two teams that had uh, quarterback issues. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, goodness. Both teams had quarterback. I didn't think the kid <laughs> Allen from A&M was going to be that bad. Man, he's a step it, up from what LSU has. All this stuff about Kevin Sumlin being the quarterback guru, nah. all I know is Kevin Sumlin, man, he ought to give some of that money back to Johnny Manziel, who made him a multimillionaire coach. Since then, they've had They've been average at best at quarterback. Yeah, the a &M, the a &M squad is, is just, you know, you brought in someone, you gave him a lot of money, you, you thought that he'd be the guy to come in and do so much for your team offensively. And I thought this football game at A&M was going to put some points on the board because of their offensive philosophy. And four receivers. And, it, and the receivers they have there, they don't have a great running game. Uh, but LSU's defense stepped up. And thank God it stepped up because the to. offensively, one man show on the offensive side of the football, how do you throw 33% completion percentage and, you know, was it 9 for 22 or 7 for 22, 83 yards? You just can't win with that in, in major college football. And this is major college football. SEC. He's last in throwing the football in the SEC, and the team's pretty bad off. But, but you know, back to the last mile scenario, like you said, before the game, Mike, everybody, people calling me, want to know what's going on. You know, I do the games, and, you know, what's your take on it? I'm like, let me explain something to you right now. He will be gone at the end of this ball game, and poof, he, should he have stayed? I, I thought so. I thought he should have kept him around. But the, 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 the circus that was leading up to this was the joke of a joke. How do you do this to a man prior to him playing his last game? Wait till it's over with, like, you know, other people do. Like Georgia make, did. Like, like Tulane did. Yeah. And, and other games, you wait till it's over and done with, then you make your decision. You don't wait till third quarter, have a little pot while in the men's bathroom, I think, on the third floor, and you come out of there saying, we keep it less. You know, my thing about it is, you know, Joe Oliva takes all the heat for this as the athletic director. But, man, this decision was way above Joe Oliva's head. How does F. King Alexander, and most people, they didn't even know who the world right. F. King Alexander was until late last week. Mm -hmm. You know, he plays like he don't know what's going on at all, and I'll come in here and save the day for less. No, you were part of the committee, almost like, you know, uh, trying to get rid of Julius Caesar. You know, it wasn't enemies that got rid of him. It was his own friends that got rid of him. And I just look at that. Why wouldn't you have said sometime during the week, you know, all these rumors going out, man, listen, I'm, I'm going to put a stop to this right here. Right. I, I'm going to say Les Miles is our football coach, and he's going to be our football coach. F. King Alexander and no one at LSU said one word. That's Nothing. the problem, Mike, I think it happened was when the game ended against Ole Miss, you started hearing the rumors and it came out from the AD and then, and then the president of the university and then all these boosters and all these guys with money. And they had an opportunity there to say, you know what, we're going to nip this, especially the AD because he's mostly out in front of the president enough to say stuff. They should have nipped this and say, look, bless is out coach. And if you want to decide – a week after the season's over with, or two weeks, and maybe Everybody after the bowl gets game. Everybody gets full of confidences and get fired. We saw 
right. that yeah. all over the place. It was just poorly run and poorly organized from a standpoint of them being a higher ups. I think once Jimbo Fisher told them no, they had no plan B to this and they moved on. Tulane making the coaching uh, decision uh, late last week to get rid of Curtis Johnson. We talked a little bit about it. Curtis was in big trouble. We had we filmed the, the show early last mm -hmm. week and uh, you know, a situation where this is a production business. You've yes. got to win. And Curtis just didn't put up enough W's out there. I told you, now again, not knowing what goes on with other coaching searches, I think the hottest guy out there is Dino Babers, the head coach at Bowling oh, Green. Man. He man, He's interviewed a lot of different places. He may end up at Syracuse as their head coach. I've looked at what he's done at two colleges and one big. If I'm the new athletic director at Tulane, that's the first phone call I'll make to make sure he's still out there that I can maybe reel him in. Well, they did, they did hire a new athletic director, and uh, I think his name is Troy Denson. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. Uh, from uh, University of Northern Iowa. Uh, Dan, from Iowa, I believe it is. Northern, Northern Iowa. Iowa. And uh, he's going to come in here, and he's going to evaluate this coach. But there are a lot of coaches out there, Mike. There are, there are a lot of guys. And mostly you see guys that moving into the ACC or coming in from, you know, the MAC, the uh, Conference USA type, and they want to move themselves up. And they've had a lot of success and, and there, some moving good the football. That's it, moving the football. And the, the important thing about with CJ and his deal was he's, he was not getting any better with the, with the team. And you talk about Ws, that's important. But they were playing some bad football the last two seasons here. And you got to get some better quality players to recruit to bring in. And that's a shame because you build a 35,000 seat stadium and you're only getting 10 to 12,000 people to come watch that performance. And that's that's why you got to bring a new fresh face in here. They, they went and got a new AD. You got to get a coach that's been around, not a coordinator. A head coach. Get a coach who's a head coach who's been around that has a winning program where he's been and let him come in and do his thing. Now it's Tulane. Now you got to open the wallets a little bit and give him some things and give him some perks, but that's the way you got to do it. I know one thing, uh, my, my neighbor is Joe Clark, and he's, you know, he, was coach, he was an assistant coach for 50 years, uh, USFL, NFL, college, major college football, and he says, you know what? You don't know what it is to be the boss until you're the boss. In essence, you can be a coordinator or position coach, but when you're the head mm -hmm. coach, the buck stops with you. And it's a difficult kind of transition for some people who sometimes are, are great coordinators or position coaches. I think CJ is one of the best wide receiver coaches in the business. And no matter where Sean Payton ends up, if he's back in New Orleans or in Miami or wherever next year, that's where Curtis Johnson's going to be. Finding the right guy to, to know what to do as the head coach, I think, is the hardest thing in, in college and, and professional sports. The problem I, I see is this. When you're going to be a head coach, when you're a head coach, Mike, you know as well as that, you got to get somebody who's either had head coaching experience or close to being a coordinator for quite a few years. You can't get a position guy and all of a sudden you're my head coach. You know, it's hard to go from being it receiver is. coach to being a head coach at, at Tulane. It's hard to be a running back coach, and all of a sudden you're you're a Notre Dame head coach. You got to have a coordinator's position because you're close enough to running an organization. You're running your offense. You're running your show as the head coach who runs the show from a head coach standpoint. And that's the only two guys I can look at: a coordinator or a head coach. If you're going to bring somebody in, it's easier to get a head coach who's been there before, who's had a winning track record. We'll find out at Georgia with all the success Mark Ritt had. Kirby Smart's never been a head coach. head coach. Never been a head coach before. We'll find out just how. I know one thing. He won't win as many games percentage-wise as Mark Ritt did at Georgia. We'll be back with more of the John 4K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford.